back to the channel, one of the questions that I get asked the most is all about my nutrition. What do I eat in a day? Today I'm going to go through everything that I eat in a day and how I eat those certain foods to fuel the training the next day and recover from the training that I've done that day. What do I eat? When do I eat it? Do I change it based on what training I have that day, the next day, the next week, the next big race goal? How do I lose weight? How do I go about keeping a certain weight? If you keep watching, you'll also see some tips on self-discipline and how something like cold exposure, how that relates to your nutrition, because maybe you're making disciplined choices surrounding what you should eat to fuel your body physically, to fuel the training, and to fuel recovery, and not to keep your brain happy for 10 minutes, and then you feel shit the next day. Enjoy the video. It's important to realize that I wasn't always a skinny runner. And so while you see me right now with a low body fat and I look in great shape, remember that I wasn't always that skinny. Some of these pictures on the left, as you can see, I can get out of shape just like anybody else can. Beer, alcohol, kebabs, too much partying, not enough discipline decisions. My body type is not your typical marathon runner. I weigh 70 kilograms. Most of the best marathon runners in the world weigh between 55 to 60 kilograms. But I knew that I couldn't get to 55 to 60 kilograms healthily. And so I made it my goal to make the muscles that I was carrying stronger. I'm a much stronger athlete. I carry more muscle bulk than some of the other marathon runners that I race against, but I decided to turn that into my advantage. Don't let people tell you that you're not built for sport. Don't let yourself tell yourself that you're not made to be a good runner and stop that internal dialogue that says, I'm not good enough, I'm too big, I'm too fat, I'm not this, I'm not that. Don't you dare beat yourself up. Every day starts the same. You wake up, you make your bed. Go outside and find some natural sunlight. Natural sunlight says, wake up, we have things to do today. Stop doing this with your morning and start doing this. Next up, and it's every runner's favorite, get those coffee beans in the coffee machine and get yourself a nice coffee. This isn't just a nice thing to do in the morning, it's also going to get your bowels moving so that when you're outside running, you don't need to go to the toilet. Get yourself some hydration, put an electrolyte in there. If you don't have access to an electrolyte, you can use salt. Get some salt, a couple of pinches on your hand and sprinkle it into the water. Because today is just an easy day, that means that I'll start the day fasted. There's a little bit of butter in my coffee and a little drop of milk, but that's all I'm gonna have before training. It's a couple of runs, but it's nothing crazy. I start easy days fasted because I don't want to get up super early to give my body a chance to digest the food and get the glucose level stable. And that means when I'm having breakfast before training, I need to get up three hours before. If I don't get up three hours before, when I eat, how my body regulates glucose, it's all over the place. So when I actually start training, my glucose levels might drop, which is gonna make me feel tired, lightheaded, faint, my heart rate's gonna be a bit all over the place. But if I'm doing a harder session, I get up that three hours before to make sure that that doesn't happen. You can check out my other video on nutrition for runners and that goes through everything you need to know about glucose. Some days I'm not fully fasted because I will have a little bit of cold milk in the coffee. But the reason I have some cold milk is kind of just to take the heat out of the coffee so that I can start drinking it. I probably could put in cold water, maybe I just like milk. I also add a little bit of butter and that little bit of butter means that at the very least on the run I have a little bit of fat to help the training. If you're doing it completely fasted that's not a problem but again as you're going to see with me eating throughout the day I'm not very good at this nutrition stuff and so yes I'm a 209 marathon runner, yes I'm an Olympian but this might not be the nutrition video that you expected to see. My nutrition is not perfect. And I guess I wanted to show you that for two reasons. I wanted to show you it because I wanted to show you that 
not every single Olympian and professional in the world is into their micronutrients, is counting all their calories, is doing all sorts to help their training, but also just to let you know that you can go a little bit easier on yourself if you're not perfect. Okay, so now that I've had my hydration, I've had my coffee, I've gone to the bathroom, I've done some stretching, I've done some foam rolling, it's now time to get on the treadmill and get the run done. Okay, so right now in Flagstaff, it is absolutely freezing cold. And so you actually don't need like an ice bath. The water is absolutely freezing. Very cold exposure is absolutely fantastic for dopamine. And so the reason I'm telling you about that is because food and how you fuel is very much linked to dopamine. What you should eat is linked to food as fuel. What you actually eat is normally linked to dopamine and what you want to give your body emotionally and not what you should be giving your body physically. The key to a cold shower is to count yourself down. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Make sure at one second you're in the cold shower, you're getting it done. A shower sucks because it continually hits you with cold water, but it's super good for that dopamine. It's also super good for discipline. Good discipline is gonna lead to, oh my God, it's getting colder. Good discipline is gonna lead to well-disciplined decisions during the day with your nutrition. Water is so, so important, and I'm gonna keep boring you with going on about it, but drink more water. So we're gonna drink more water, and then we're gonna make some porridge oats, and that'll kickstart the day, get some food going. The reason today I'm going to be eating slightly more carbohydrates is because tomorrow is going to be some threshold training. Because tomorrow is slightly harder training and the body, when I say slightly harder, I mean the intensity is slightly harder. And because the intensity is slightly harder, that means that we'll be using more carbohydrates as fuel. So because we're using more carbohydrates as fuel, we need to get some carbs in the body today. I'm gonna tuck my way through this porridge. I'm assuming you don't need instructions on how to eat a bowl of porridge. And so I'm gonna eat this porridge and then we'll move on to what I have for lunch later in the day. Okay, and so I'm now home. And what I'm gonna do now is prep some more food, which if I can find it, is some rice and then I'm gonna have some bison. And like I said, this is three hours before I do my next training session and that's all about those glucose levels because I don't wanna feel lightheaded, I don't wanna feel rubbish. I'm also gonna have some more hydration. So super, super important. So glass of water with some more hydration. We're gonna cook up some rice, cook up some bison. And if I have some vegetables, I'll throw some vegetables in there as well. This is the view. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. It's not even cold because there's a bit of sun. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm eating out of the frying pan, but it just kind of saves washing up. And I know you're eyeing up that grill, but that's what we're gonna eat later. More rice and we'll grill some meat. If I wasn't doing a session tomorrow, well then dinner would be salad and vegetables and protein. But because I have a session tomorrow, well then it's important to get more carbohydrates into the body to make sure I'm fueling tomorrow carbohydrates to fuel the harder days when you're going to be using that glycogen proteins good vegetables brilliant for muscle recovery and so if you don't have a harder day or you're not doing like a longer volume day the next day well then you don't have to go crazy with the carbohydrates so i thought it'd be cool to do a little bit of way of a weigh-in for the youtube video and I'm not actively trying to lose weight currently, but because I took about two to three months off full training, well then my weight has obviously gone up a bit, but when you're actually at altitude and you're running perhaps as much volume as I'm running, the weight will just naturally fall off. You can't eat whatever you want and expect to you know, still lose weight. But as long as you're being somewhat disciplined with your nutrition and, and you know, you're know you not absolutely loading junk food into you and heaps of alcohol and this kind of stuff, well, weight naturally, with good gym, with good training, it will naturally come down. Okay, and so it's almost six o'clock. 
I'm getting out a little bit later than I'd have liked to, but I did eat food a little bit later. And so it gave me a bit more time to just digest food, get myself organized. And now I'm gonna go and run five miles really easy. Why I love the evening run, I'm even like dressed casually, but I love the evening run because there's no emphasis on pace. It's just nice and relaxed, whatever you feel like doing. And you just take that pressure off yourself and you can just enjoy running in its purest form, one foot in front of the other and no stress, no pressure, no emphasis on, I wanna build loads of fitness and it's my favorite run to do. I'm just licking up the electrolyte tablet. Um, I'm getting a little bit self-conscious about how much I've ate today. I feel like a lot of the comments are gonna be that I haven't ate enough, but I don't know, is it normal? I've had porridge, I've had the coffee this morning with some butter, I had the pistachio and cream coffee, and then I had the rice and the bison and the onions. So yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm not eating enough. All right, so I'm gonna drink my hydration, have a shower. Okay guys, and so that's dinner. We have, I guess, three dishes. So we've got the rice, that's just carbohydrates for tomorrow. Um, this is quite a big salad, I suppose you could say. Um, so it's just a Caesar salad. We've got cheese, we've got ranch. I'm gonna put one of the, I really overdid those for burgers. Some of the shrimp. I did clean my hands, by the way, after I was cooking and, okay. Then I always go, So I don't know, is this pretty weird? We've got salad, we've got shrimp, we've got beef wagyu, we've rice for our carbohydrates tomorrow, and then we've good fats in the guacamole. I don't know if everybody would add it to their rice, and, but yeah, it all goes down the same way. Okay, you guys, so we're getting towards the end of the day, and I haven't had anything else since we last checked in, but now I'm gonna have some calm and so I make up some calm before bed, which includes magnesium, which is good for sleep, but it also helps the muscles calm down. If you ever get like jittery muscles or your muscles kind of like clench in the night, it can sometimes be from a lack of magnesium. So I'm gonna make the calm drink, go put the Normatex on, blue light emitting glasses, I'll have a hot shower, I'll put on my pajamas, and that's that process of starting to get ready for bed. I'll do a headspace meditation, and then hopefully I'll fall asleep. Okay guys, so that's a wrap on today's video. I do hope you find something useful in today's video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully at the very least you learned that you need to structure your nutrition in a way that it helps fuel the training the next day and what you've done that day. Start to think about the body in terms of demands. Start to add in some of those cold exposure, some of the discipline stuff, and perhaps a little bit of a bedtime routine, Normatex, Headspace, Blue Mitten Glasses, Calm Drink, just to get the body ready for sleep. I do believe I should have more fruits and vegetables in my diet, and I'm always working on things. But at the very least, I'm clued in in terms of when to eat, and how to fuel the train in the next day, and how to best recover on that day. If you like today's video, comment below, like, subscribe, do what you gotta do, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Have fun with your running, don't be so hard on yourself. Running is really, really difficult, really, really difficult. So if you haven't in a while, give yourself a big pat on the back, a big hug, well done, and good job. Take care. Much for joining me in today's video. If you like this style, go to joggingroom.com. There's over 12 hours of tips, tutorials, ways to be better at running and enjoy life more check that out you might find a course on there that you really like and something that will help your running and race results improve